Hello and welcome to Dartside Scenics. This is the second review video of the Algo Laser Alpha laser cutter. Here I attempt to make a building and some accessories for a project I'm working on. First I wanted to work on a sign for the front of some railway modules I'd been working on. It's a heritage layout so I wanted something traditional, made of wood and hand painted. I designed the sign in Lightburn and you can see here that the black lines are for cutting and the blue lines are for engraving. The reason for the engraving is to make it easier to place the separate letters. When I was happy with the design and the placement of the wood I pressed start on the algo laser. This is an A4 sized piece of 3mm plywood. This was my first attempt at making the sign and I was really pleased with the result. All of the pieces are still held together by a small tab which is easily removed with a sharp knife. These are the main pieces of the sign but I'm also going to cut some 1mm MDF for the South Devon Railway text. It made sense to make a lot of these letters as I've got quite a few signs to make. I'm going to be painting all of these pieces, but actually it looks nice as bare wood. Each piece is given a quick spray with primer before being painted. And here you can see the reason for the very light engraving. Even though it's been painted, I can still see where I can accurately place the letters. The back plate is given a coat of black paint and the trim and letters are given a coat of white. A thin coat of glue is brushed on before adding the letters. This method was a really nice way of being accurate but still having a traditional looking sign. And here is the finished sign. I was really happy with it and it's something I couldn't have done without the laser cutter. The next job for the laser was to create a gate which I can't find in kit form. I measured the real thing so I could be as accurate as possible with the laser cutter. My main concern here was how delicate some of the pieces would be when reduced down to 1 to 76 scale. It was a good test for the laser to see how intricate it could be on 1.5mm plywood. I was very careful when releasing the gates and although they'd probably be better suited in MDF, these came out really well. These are given a couple of coats of plain white paint. The next step was to create some red circles for the front of the gate. This is 240 gram card. Each one is given a coat of red paint on both sides and then left to dry. In real life the gate has a mesh on the front so I just glued some on with super glue. With a mesh in place I could then glue the red circle over the top. This is another example of being able to create something very unique in a very short space of time. 
and finally a building to see how the laser could cope with brickwork, stonework and roof tiles. I live quite close to this station building so I was able to get some approximate measurements and then transfer it into Lightburn. The stonework at the bottom was hand drawn in a different program and then transferred into Lightburn. I need to make the stone slightly smaller but I wanted to see how effective the engraving was. A low power cut setting is used to create the brick effect. When the brickwork is finished it moves on to the engraving of the stonework. Now the job's finished I can test the corner joints which were really accurate. I cut another piece of MDF as a base and then started gluing it all together. I cut out some very fine beams for the roof but I need to add a few more when I revise the design. Moving on to the roof design, these will be cut out of 240 gram card. Once I was happy with the design of one strip of tiles, Lightburn has a very good array feature to create lots more. These strips are cut out individually and then layered on top of each other to give the effect of tiles. When all of the strips have been glued, the edges are trimmed to size. Even though the tiles are very small, you can see from this close-up how effective the method is with accurate laser cutting. For the roof tile effect I'm giving it a light spray with black primer, followed by light grey from a distance. When it comes to painting the brickwork, the lines in between are incredibly fine and will fill with paint easily, so I'm just dry brushing on this red brick colour. The stonework is given a base coat of light grey. For the mortar between the bricks I'm experimenting with some plaster of Paris which is fine enough to get into the grooves. It also tones down the colour I used and takes away the shine of the MDF. This is a technique I've used before on stonework, it's basically watered down filler and it's brushed on and then stippled. Now the roof tiles are dry I can glue them into position. The next step was to create a door for the side which is cut out of 1.5mm plywood. The door is given a coat of paint and then left aside to dry. This is more of the 240g card which I'm using to cut out the fascia boards. They're given a single coat of paint and left to dry. And then I can stick on the door and the fascia boards. Now I realise all of these designs need refining and I need to do a better job of making the models, but the potential to create is huge. In conclusion, this machine is fantastic to use and gives great results. If you want more information, please see the links in the description. 
Thanks for watching.